OK, so can you tell the listeners what the book is about? Just briefly outline the story for us, if you would. Yeah, I mean, at its heart, the book's about an unlikely friendship between two characters. Alex, who's the book's narrator, he's a sort of young, geeky, socially awkward teenager, and his friendship's with Mr Peterson, who's a reclusive widower and Vietnam veteran. So it's about how they affect each other's lives and where their friendship takes them. OK, tell, tell us a little bit more about Alex. What, what's he like as a, as a character? Well, as I've said, Alex is Alex is basically a geek. Um, he starts he starts the story quite shy, socially awkward, doesn't fit in at school. He's a bullied teenager, and the book's really about him. It's almost a coming of age story. It's about him finding his inner strength and his his own voice and integrity, really, and how this blossoms. Does this mirror your own upbringing in any way? Alex has a very unconventional upbringing. His his mother's a clairvoyant working, reading tarot cards in a shop in Glastonbury. He doesn't know who his father is. This is something he never finds out. And his experience don't really mirror mine in many obvious ways. My mum's a little bit hippie-ish, and I, I've sort of got a, a love of um, that side of life from her properly. And... Um, my my father's a scientist, and that sort of feeds into Alex's character as as well. He's he's very interested in in science. So there are lots of elements of me in Alex. I think that's inevitable. The geekiness is something I, I've grown into over the years. Um, the difference is I wasn't really like Alex um, at that age when I was um, a teenager. I think I was quite sort of bookish deep down and had a big enthusiasm for for learning like Alex does but that was something that I tried to keep a sort of private vice I think I was like most teenagers I, I wanted to fit in the thing about Alex is and the thing that I enjoyed about writing Alex is he's unconventional in that he doesn't feel that need after a certain point to fit in he's very sort of at home with his own personality in in a way that's quite unusual being a teenager I think so there are influences there, but it, this book is in no way autobiographical. So what made you want to write the book in the first place? What's the inspiration behind it? Um, I've always loved writing. I used to write a lot as a child. And then um, that's another of the things that I sort of grew out of in in my teenage years when it becomes sort of a little bit embarrassing to have creative aspirations. Um, but it's always been a sort of quite a, a strong ambition to, to write a book. And... Basically, it turned out that I had the opportunity. Largely, it was to do with the um, recession. I couldn't find other work. It was partly necessity. Um, I was sort of doing what I'd imagine a lot of people are, temping, sending applications out and not really getting anything back. And I was writing as a very serious hobby in, in my spare time, and gradually the balance shifted. And I had a lot of support from my, um, from my wife, who eventually said, you know, why don't you really go for it and write full time? and um and just see what happens so i that really gave me the impetus to to have the confidence to to do it as a as a full-time job and essentially that's what i did for 18 months i wrote it six days a week pretty much nine to five and prior to that you did a phd in film studies back in sheffield yes. has that has that had any bearing on the book i mean i know you're in early stages of negotiations for uh, making a film out of this this novel did you have that in mind that perhaps that one day it might be a film? Um, this is very early stages, I should stress that. But um, I, I think writing the book was a big enough challenge originally. The sort of um, the dream, obviously, was to have people read it and get it published, and that in itself seemed like quite a mountain to climb. But I, I, people have said that they found it quite cinematic and. Um, I find it difficult to sort of gauge how where that came from. I, I think it's I do have to visualise things quite strongly, um, to the extent that I like to sort of know where the furniture is in the room that's not going to be mentioned in the book. But it's it's just I guess the way my my mind works that I sort of I do picture the scenes and and the settings quite vividly. And whether that comes out of um, my background and interest in in film, it's it's entirely possible. Reading reviews of the book, there's um, a lot of talk about it being the next big crossover book. So with crossover in mind, who was it aimed at when you were writing the book? 
I was always aiming to write a book for for adults. The the crossover thing, it kind of it that really got sort of banded about when it was picked up by Hodo who were publishing it, and um, that was the market that they saw for it, which is sort of fourteen plus. So I, I think um, it's a book I hope that will appeal to to sort of older children and teenagers and adults as well. And I think. I think it's a book that you'd get something different out of sort of reading as a, a child or teenager than you would as an as an adult. But really, I, I think my main intention was to write the the sort of fiction that I like to read, and I tend to like stuff that's um, accessible but has layers, so that it, it's not dumbed down or obvious, but at the same time it's clear and sort of, as I said, accessible, really. I read a quote from you saying, I like books that deal with the big issues in a funny way. That's essentially what you're trying to do here, is it? Yeah, I, I love humour in books, and I think, um, in a way, especially when you're dealing with potentially very bleak issues or big issues, um, I think there's always a place for for humour and wit, and that's true in, in, in life as well. I think it's one of the... the the ways we cope as um, human beings with sort of, you know, big, complex existential issues. But yes, my my influences are people like Kurt Vonnegut and John Irving, those people who really sort of deal with very, very serious issues, but do it in a way that can can make you laugh at the same time. And it's not sort of a throwaway humour. It, it's There's almost a, a blending, so things can be sad and funny all at once. And that's the sort of book I really admire. And it was certainly what I was aiming for when, when I wrote Alex. So what's next then, Gavin? Is there another book on the way? Or are you going to concentrate on the film? Yep, there's another book on the way. Um, I've got a two-book deal with Hodder. So um, I'm working on the second book now. It's very early stages, but um, it's a completely independent project i think people who read alex will realize that alex's story ends and um no sequels i'm afraid but yeah so i'm i'm in the early stages of um of starting something completely new well good luck with it thank you very much for coming in thank you thank you for having me